understand when you mix the word with with musical, sometimes people act funny. And 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 what they don't understand is you need both. You need the word and you need praise. Uh, you have to learn to say something to God so that he'll say something to you. You have to learn that you need to invoke him to come and speak to you. And if, if, if you ever need an answer from God, uh, just, just stop and say something to him. And watch him say something to you. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible or an iPad or iPhone, something, anything with the word, will you go to 1 Samuel for me? 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chapter 16. Uh, I'm sorry. Will, will you clap your hands for the pastor of this house? I'm sorry. I'm so excited. I forgot protocol. And thank you for this opportunity to speak. And, and this lovely brother here is covering the gospel. Thank you, sir, for setting the stage for me. All right, Samuel 16, chapter, chapter 16, verse 14. Then we'll start our reading. And it reads, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is cunning player of an harp. And it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hands, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well, and bring unto him me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning and playing, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a cunning person. And the Lord is with him. 19 verse. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse, and said, Send me David thy son which is with thy sheep. And Jesse took an ass laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent down by David his son unto Saul. And David, David came to Saul, stood before him, and he loved him greatly. And he became his armor bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God had was upon Saul that David took an heart and played with his hands. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Amen. If, if you'll let me this evening, I want to take for a topic, I'm ready to play. Amen. You may be seated. I'm ready to play. When, when I got an opportunity to, to call my aunt and saying, and and confirm this meeting today, uh, I, I got some instructions, or I should I say, I asked some instructions. And I said to her, is there, is there a topic, or is there a theme? And she said to me, uh, no, but let the spirit lead you. Yeah. I said, all right. I said, um, are, are there, is there you know, a time limit? How long you want me to speak? Want me to do two minutes, five minutes, seven minutes, sit down? What, what do you want me to do? She said to me, let the spirit lead you. And I said, all right, uh, you sure you don't have no special instructions for me? And again, she said to me, let the spirit lead you. Uh, the issue I have now in today's time is that everybody with a spirit ain't got the spirit of God. Um, um, you'll be surprised how everybody with a mic right. not operating with the spirit of God. Now, everybody that claim they're speaking life into your Come life on, ain't speaking with a pure spirit. Yeah. Uh, everybody that say that they're your friend, they're your brother, they're your hey. sister, that their spirit and their motives may not always be uh, the spirit of God. And, and, and sometimes I understand that, that we as Christians, we forget that, that we have a spirit of discernment. And we allow people with the wrong spirit in our space. And, and, and this, 
this happens more often should it, than it should because we're, we're so zealous to have people around us. Yeah. We're so zealous to have friends. We're so zealous to be connected and never checking the spirit. Never checking. Uh, it's funny that, that we got a, a lot of Christians, a lot of church folk, hey. that their spirit ain't right. Uh, you, you might be sitting next to somebody, don't look at them, though, but their spirit might not be right. They, they, they might have a nasty spirit, but don't look at them. Uh, they, they may have a jealous spirit, but don't look at them. Please don't look at them. They, they may have an angry spirit, but don't look at them. Please don't look at your neighbor. Please don't look at them, because you don't know what kind of spirit they might have. And as we go back to this text, we see here, Saul has an issue now because something's wrong with the spirit. If you ever check out this text in this story, it says that the spirit of God departed from Saul. And, and when the spirit of God departed, God decided he would send him an evil spirit. The issue with this is, why is it that a believer has God wanting to send him an evil spirit? My God, you, you ever check out some people and, and you saw them at the height of their ministry or you saw them at the height of when they were working and making good money and out of nowhere they've fallen off the earth. Or they've fallen from where God had taken them. Maybe you might want to check out what kind of spirit God has sent them. Uh, the good thing about this is Saul is a man of power. And, and Saul is king. Saul is ruler. Saul has influence. Saul is the one that's in charge. And now the one in charge ain't really in charge because he ain't got the one that's in charge. And so we see here uh, he needs someone to help him with his issue. And, and, and it, 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 it kind of scared me that he had an issue with God, but didn't go to God. Uh, you might want to watch, 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 watch people that come to you with all their issues and never take their issues to God. Watch people that always come to you with all their problems and never take their problems to God. And so now he has an issue and he needs someone to help him. And, and, and one of his servants says to him, we've seen a man. Same. Yeah. And he's good. He, he, he's good. He works. He, he can play. He's a good man of war. He has a good character. Maybe we can send for him. Uh, I want to tell you that somebody is watching. Yeah. You may not see them, but they see you. It, it, it's strange to me that, that in this point in the text, David is a sheep herder. He's out with the sheep. He's doing the dirty work. He, he's out there tending to the animals, but people are watching him. Uh, he, he's not the cutest. He's not the tallest. He's not the best of really anything at this point, but they're watching him. Uh, why are they watching him? Because the text says the Spirit of God is with you. You ought to look at somebody and tell them the Spirit of God is with you. Come on, tell somebody the Spirit of God is with you. And because of this, they're watching him. Uh, and can I tell you that everybody that's watching you may not mean you're good. But, but, but watch this. Somebody is watching you that has what you need. And that has the connection. That has the ability to get you where God wants you to be. Um, um, right here, you see, they, they say here in chapter 18, I mean, I'm sorry, verse 18. Uh, the answer one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse. That they're watching him. I've seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning and plain, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. You may not feel like it, but God is with you. God is with you. Yes, he is. And, and when God is with you, who can be against you? Who, who and what can be against you? Uh, life, life has a way of throwing stones at you. Life has a way of throwing obstacles at you. Life has a way of making you want to blame the devil. But I've learned sometimes life happens. But, but you should know and be encouraged and know today that God is with you. 
And if you go down to the 19th verse of this, this text, it says, Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse, and said, Send me David thy son, with his, which is with the sheep. Um, you have to know where your connection lies. Uh, your connection is very important. Why is it important? His connection in this text is his father. When the king sent for him, if his father didn't have the right spirit, his father re rejected him. His connection there was good because his father had his best intent. Watch this. We, we, we oftentimes, we connect to people that don't have good intent for us. We, we, we connect to people that, that are not really having the best interest in seeing you progress to where God wants you to be. My God, it, it's bad when family is a stumbling block. It, it, it's bad when your brother and your sister are holding you back. It's bad when your parents don't want to see you be where God has in store for you. But if you keep checking out this text, it says, And David and Jesse took an ass laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by David, his son, unto Saul. So he blessed him and sent him where he needed to be. He blessed him and sent him where he needed to be. God, this, this is where I got happy. This is where I got excited because now David is right where he needs to be for God to use him. At this point now, David is in the big house. David, David now is, is right before Saul. David now, he can really work his thing. And I've learned that that if you're not ready for what God has for you, come on, you'll miss your blessing. Oh. If, if you're not ready for what God wants for you, you'll miss your opportunity. Yeah. If you're not prepared yeah. for the place God has in store for you, listen, I've, I've seen saints pray for things they weren't prepared for. Uh -oh. And then they complain and wonder why God won't bless them. Right. I've seen well. saints pray and beg God for places they would never stay. The character wasn't right. The spirit wasn't right. But, but we ask and beg God for things we're not ready or prepared for. And so now you're, you're praying on your knees, begging God for a Mercedes, but you won't take care of your Honda. You, 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 you're on your knees begging God for a mansion, but, but, but you won't keep your apartment clean. You, you're on your knees begging and, and, and asking God for a million dollars, but you won't pay tithes. I'm sorry, I'm stepping on toes. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. My God. But here now, David is ready. He gets in into the position where where he he's now in front of the king. And and so while he's in front of the king, his spirit is right. And he brought gifts, his daddy sent him with stuff and and now the king loves him. He's a king favorite just from being there. And and while he's there, guess who shows up? Who shows up? The evil spirit from the Lord. Now is his opportunity to work the gift that God has given him. Now you, you may think I have forgot got my, my topic. I'm ready to play. Here you'll see now that David begins to play his harp. And while he's playing his harp, uh, Saul begins to feel a little better. While he's playing his harp, the, the depression begins to fall off Saul while he's playing his heart. Oh God, I'm starting to feel the good. And while he's playing his heart, the evil spirit is starting to leave Saul. I, I, I just stop by to tell you, my musicians and my honoree, whatever you do, don't stop playing. Uh, whatever you do, don't stop using the gift that God has given you. Whatever you do, don't stop. Because the Bible says your gift will make room for you. It may not look like it right now, but, but your gift will surely work, make room for you. You may not play an instrument, but, but if you got a gift, I promise, if you work your gift, if you work what God has given you, if you work God, if you take your stones and you take your slingshot, I promise you, you can knock down any giant. Yeah. My God, the Bible says a couple of chapters over that, that when they were 
fighting Goliath that, that, that they, they put Saul's arm on him. And when they put his arm on him, he couldn't move. And, and when they put the arm on him, it was too big. It was, it was too loose. And, and David said, take it off of me. Take it off of me. And he said, give me my sack. And give me some rocks from down at the brook. And give me my slingshot. And he took his gift. And, and he went out and he started to slew uh, the giant. So look at your neighbor. Tell him, use what he gave you. Uh, and we, 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 we tend as saints to, to get excited about what God is doing through and with somebody else. Listen, I'm going to tell you now, you'll miss what God has for you looking at what he's doing for me. You, you'll miss what God wants to do for you looking at what he's doing for me. You'll miss what God has for you looking at what he has for me. All right. And so now while they're in the chambers, he's playing his heart. And while he's playing his heart, he starts to feel the anointing. If you let me, let me tell it how I see it. And while the anointing is flowing through, the Spirit of God begins to move in the room. And while it's moving in the room, the enemy knows something's happening. Hallelujah. You may not know it, but the enemy is always there. He is always present. The Bible says there came a day when the sons of God came to present themselves. And guess who showed up? Satan showed up. You may not know it, but he might be here with you today. You might want to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I know. I'm starting to feel it, y'all. I know. I know. I know God is with me. Cause the word said, who can be against me? If God be for me, who can be against me? So while David's in the room, playing his heart. He's playing for the king. He's playing for the king. His gift is now making room for me. While he's playing for the king, the king sends word to his servants and say, tell his daddy, let him stay here. In the king's house, positions are made. Can I tell you what? God is doing something just for you. He's setting you up to send you to the king's house. He's setting you up to get a blessing from the king. It may not look like it, but God about to do something for you. Keep working your gift. Keep doing what you're doing. If you're a singer, keep singing. If you're a player, keep playing. If you're a writer, keep writing. If you're going to run, run on. Whatever you do, keep doing what God told you. You ought to take a neighbor by the hand. You ought to shake him like you want to shake it off. Shake your neighbor's hand. Tell him, keep doing what God told you to do.
say nay. You better be ready. Say good and ready. Tell your neighbor, say you better be ready. Good and ready to play. Yes, Lord.